Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for the week three lecture video. As you can see from the time of this video, it's a little bit shorter than last week. Um, don't feel overwhelmed. I know there's a lot of information that's kind of coming at you. You don't feel like you have to know all of it and master all of it right away. Um, you know, there's a thing that happens when we start learning stuff like this and it's called analysis paralysis. And you just start knowing so many different, you start to learn so many different factors of things that, uh, that you know, you get paralyzed and it's hard to do anything. So, um, so yeah, I've had a chance to meet with some of you in my office hours uh, on Zoom, which is Tuesday mornings, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And, and that's been good to just to chat with a few people and, you know, kind of get to know where you're coming from and help you out and, and maybe take away some of that uh, overwhelming feeling. You know, when I go through this stuff, I get overwhelmed, too. There's a lot to do. Um, but uh, anytime you want to, you can message me through Canvas. And, uh, and just, uh, just reach out, ask any questions. If you miss an assignment, you know, reach out, let me know. Maybe we can work something out. Um, there's been some great discussions I've been reading through, so keep that up. Uh, be creative with your discussions, your business plan, you know, the different assignments. Like, like this is your, I feel like you need to be creative with your business as well as with your art. Um, it's sort of an extension of it. It's another, it's another way of, of making use of it. Um, so continue to make these connections, you know, in these discussions. I think that the people you want to know in the music business are the kinds of people that will take a music business class, you know, so network with these people, uh, with your classmates, with me, you know, um, another tip, start your business right now, just start it. You know, you have, uh, different things you want to do and different things you think you need to know. Um, uh, but the sooner you just get started, the sooner you're going to figure out where you fit in, what's your niche, where, uh, exactly which pieces of all of this information pertain the most to you. So just jump in and get started. If you don't know how to start, uh, reach out to me. I can, uh, you know, I can really help you out with that as well. So, uh, so yeah, let's just jump right in. All right. So in the video today, we're going to talk about mainly copyright. You know, we're talking about protecting your compositions and that sort of thing. And even if you're not a composer or a songwriter, uh, this information is just good to have sort of like a general grasp of, you know, uh, we, we kind of, we understand property really well. And then when it gets to intellectual property, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's just a little bit different, but, but not really. So, uh, so let's talk about how to copyright music. Uh, what is music copyright and why it matters? And, uh, this comes from, this information comes from a really useful blog that I'll, I'll put a link to in the description. So, uh, music copyright is one of the most important concepts for musicians. It's how you get paid for your music and how you protect the music you've worked so hard on. But it's also really confusing. Without the help of a music lawyer, the ins and outs of copyright are tough to figure out on your own. In this blog, they talk to Mark Quayle, who's a music attorney, to help clear up some of the confusion around music copyrights and help you get a handle on your intellectual property. So he has been a practicing music, uh, he's been practicing music law since 1990. Uh, this is Mark Quayle. He currently advises leading electronic musicians Richie Houghton, Dubfire, Art Department, John Aquaviva, Matador, a lot of others. Quayle also sits on the executive and advisory board for the Association for Electronic Music and hosts the successful The Music Law podcast. In other words, he knows music law inside and out. Quayle took time to answer the most important questions about music copyright and how they impact getting paid for your music. What is music copyright? Music copyright is the set of rights granted by your country's government for the intellectual property, the music you create. Each country has different variations on the rights granted, but they all exist to help you control what you're able to do with your song or recording, who can and can't exploit your work for profit, and how you get paid for your music. What are the types of musical copyright? There are two separate forms of music copyright. The copyright covering the song, sometimes called the composition, and the copyright covering the recording of that song, sometimes called the master. These two copyrights can be owned by two separate parties. For example, Bob Dylan wrote the song All Along the Watchtower, recorded it, and released it via his record label. When people bought that record, Dylan earned royalties from the exploitation of his copyright covering the composition and the recording. The composition and the recording. He wrote it and recorded it. Jimi Hendrix also made a recording of the song All Along the Watchtower. When people bought Hendrix's version, he received royalties for the exploitation of his copyright covering the recording, while Bob Dylan got paid for the exploitation of his copyright in the song. By recording and releasing his own version of All Along the Watchtower, Hendrix was exploiting Dylan's cop composition copyright. Dylan's composition copyright ensured that he was still getting paid for his original work. 
How do I copyright music? In the US and Canada, copyright applies immediately when you complete a song and fix it in some form like writing it out in sheet music or recording it on a physical medium like a hard drive or tape. Applying a copyright notice to your work isn't mandatory, but officially applying for a copyright registration can help if someone is looking for who to contact if they want to ask for permission to exploit your work. If you want to get the maximum protection for your art, for your song, for your work, uh, for example, court-awarded money damages in an infringement lawsuit, you need to register your work with the applicable governmental office. What rights does my music copyright cover? What your copyright covers depends on what your country's copyright statutes and laws provide. Most copyright laws typically give you control over what you can do with your work, which you can stop others from doing if they try to exploit your work without your consent. The most common rights covered are the right to make copies or reproductions, the right to sell your work, the right to adapt your work, the right to license your work, the right to perform, broadcast, or transmit your work. Do I have to register my music copyright? Not necessarily. In Canada and the US, copyright arises on the completion of the work as long as you have it fixed in some medium, not just an idea in your head. But if you want to get the maximum protection for your copyright and provide a way for people to contact you about using your work, you need to register your music with your country's, country's copyright office. Let me say it again. In Canada and the US, copyright arises on the completion of the work as long as you have it fixed in some medium, not just an idea in your head. How does music copyright impact how I get paid? A music copyright provides you with rights for your intellectual property that are similar to other property rights. Just like the type of property that you can hold in your hand, the concept of copyright permits you to sell your music give others permission to use your music or restrict others from exploiting your intellectual property without your permission. Getting paid for your copyrights can take on many forms. The most common ways to earn money from the use of your copyrights is in the form of streaming royalties, downloaded files, appearances of the record as part of a movie or in a video game, and performances on radio or at a live concert. Remember, the song that's on those recordings also earns money from those sources. How do I make sure I'm getting all my royalties? How the money flows to you takes on many forms as well. There are many administrators worldwide who facilitate payment for these varying uses to you, the copyright holder. They include performance rights organizations like BMI or ASCAP, music distribution companies, record companies, neighboring rights societies like Sound Exchange or Connect Music. These entities collect money from all parties who use music like radio stations, online music streaming services, Digital, digital download retailers, movie theaters, restaurants, and disperse that money to the copyright owners. So hopefully the information from that blog uh, clears things up a little bit about copyright. You know, when you get into the weeds of it in the book, it's sort of, it's dense and, uh, and there's, like I said, it's kind of overwhelming. So hopefully that breaks it down nicely. Uh, let's move on to the discussion for this week. So the discussion is uh, on music copyright cases. So there's a website I link to that lists recent and landmark music copyright cases. Uh, I want you to take a moment and dig deeper into one or more of these cases uh, in at least three paragraphs. Describe which case or cases you learned about, your thoughts on the process and outcomes involved, and how what you have learned about copyright might affect your current or future music endeavors. Please also respond to at least one of your classmates' submissions. Now on to the quiz. The quiz for this week, protecting your compositions. Let's go through and give you the information you need to know for this quiz. So when you're registering a copyright in a song, you must submit the appropriate form, one lead sheet, and a CD or cassette if the work is not published. Uh, in other words, copies have not been distributed to the public. The easiest and fastest way to register your copyright is to do it online through the Copyright Office website. Copyright protection begins on the date of creation. In most cases, copyright protection lasts for the lifetime of the author plus 70 years. If there is a co-author or authors, then the 70 years are measured from the last surviving author's death. Copyright owners have the exclusive right to authorize the making of copies and derivative works based on the original work, whether a musical composition or recording. The defense of fair use permits reasonable unauthorized copying from a copyrighted work when the, copyright, the copying does not substantially impair present or potential value and the copying in some way advances the public interest. Public benefit, excuse me. U.S. copyright law only protects the expression of ideas, not the idea itself.
For musicians, engineers, and producers, the practical effect of the two different fair use standards, standards is that sampling a small portion of a musical composition may sometimes be fair use because copying a small portion may borrow uncopyrightable single notes like uncopyrightable ideas. Obtaining the advanced permission, copyright licenses, or clearances from owners of both the musical composition and the sound recording you want to sample is the best way to avoid the problems and expenses that can result from illegal sampling. Music of recognition software, this one's important. Music of recognition software is used on sites such as YouTube to identify samples within uploaded recordings and block them from being posted before an infringement can occur. In some cities, special music clearance firms routinely request, negotiate, prepare, and process clearances for sampled materials for a fee. For the aspiring recording artist, the most efficient and least expensive way to include high quality samples without risking a lawsuit or sacrificing royalties is to purchase commercially available sampling software. Uh, various pre-cleared or public domain instrumental sounds and effects are available for unrestricted use through platforms like the Converse Rubber Track Sample Library, Loop Masters, and Jukebox. These may be incorporated into recordings without payment of any royalty or fee beyond the initial cost of the payment. A little bit about songwriter collaboration. In 1995 and the Billboard Hot 100, there were 32 solo songwriters. In 2005, there were 14 solo songwriters. And in 2015, there were only two songs written by one songwriter in the top 100. If you co-write a song with someone, both of you own the entire song as joint owners in what copyright law calls a joint work, which the copyright law defines as a work prepared by two or more authors with the intention that their contribution be merged into inseparable or interdependent parts of a unitary whole. Here are some of the most famous songwriting duos of all time. Bernie Toppin and Elton John, John Lennon and Paul McCartney, and Goffin and King. As joint owners, you and your co-writer can divide your song ownership in whatever proportion you want. In the absence of a written agreement, you automatically share equally, even if your contributions clearly were not equal. And with two songwriters, you own the song 50-50. Three songwriters, one-third each, and so on. Just as a contributing co-writer is entitled to a rateable share of ownership, that co-writer is also entitled to the same rateable share of income, absent an agreement to the contrary with his or her other co-writers. In the rap and hip-hop world, uh, producers commonly take a co-interest in a song's copyright and therefore a sharing of publishers' and writers' income in the song for the tracks or beats that they produced uh, and con contributed to the song's recording. It's clear, it's clear that the trend in hit songwriting continues toward multiple co-writers dominating songwriting credits uh, for the records on the top 100. It's more important than ever for you to have a grasp of the basic business and legal tenets, tenets that apply to, the song, to song collaboration. And the law is relatively simple and makes sense if you co-write a song, whether you write together in the recording studio or remotely from different continents, and whether there are two co-writers or six, the same rules apply. Even though it's important that you have this basic grasp of all this stuff, uh, if you're feeling overwhelmed, don't. You shouldn't wait to start your business uh, before you understand everything, because you'll never understand everything. And, uh, you know, be inquisitive, be creative, sort of... Uh, get what you can and have a good general understanding, ask questions, use this book as a resource, and these people that we know in this class as a resource. And finally, the last piece of information, uh, musicians make less money today from records. So the digitization of music plus copyright infringement, uh, they smashed the sale of recordings. Worldwide revenues for CDs, video cassettes, and digital downloads fell from $36 billion in 2000 to $15 billion in 2015. Although streaming platforms ex have exploded, most musicians are earning pennies or fractions of pennies when before they earn dollars.